in section 4.4.2, we'll be looking at symmetric matrices and other special types of square matrices. We'll be using what we just defined. We'll be using the transpose. All right, so let A be a square matrix. A is going to be called symmetric if the transpose of A is A. It's going to be called anti-symmetric or skew-symmetric if the transpose is not exactly A, it's minus A. All right, let's try this definition out on, on the matrix A that we have here. Let's take A to be this matrix here. Is it symmetric? Is it anti-symmetric? So both definitions starts with the transpose. So let's find the transpose of this matrix. I'm going to transform these three rows into three columns. So my first column will be 0, 2, 3. My second one will be 2, 2, minus 1. And the third will be 3, minus 1, 8. To know if it's symmetric, I need to compare this with A. So if I look, everything is identical. So my matrix A is symmetric indeed. Now, if I want to know if it's anti-symmetric, I'll be comparing A transpose to minus A. Well, that's not going to be the same. I'll have a 2 instead of a minus 2. Since this one is 0, 2, 3, and this one is 0, minus 2, minus 3. So let's not even compare everything else. Just that fact is enough. As soon as one entry is different, they're different. All right, so let's try some more with skew symmetric. Um, I want to find all values of x, y, and z so that A is Q symmetric. So I need A transpose and I need minus A. So for A transpose, these two rows will become the columns. So I'll have x and 3 and y and z as my two columns of A transpose. Now I want this to be the same as minus A. That's what the definition says. A transpose is minus A. So minus A just means put minuses in front of each. So we want these two to be equal. They're the same size. So all we have to worry about are the entries. So I need the first entries to be equal. And then minus, uh, sorry, Y should be minus 3. 3 should be minus y, and z should be minus z. So all four of these equations should be true at the same time. Um, so this is 2x is 0, so x is 0. Here y is minus 3. Here y is minus 3. And so this one gives me 2z is 0. So z itself is 0, so we need x to be 0, y to be minus 3, and z to be 0. Let's make sure we answer the question. Find all values of x, y, and z. Yeah, perfect. They're not asking for a back. They're just asking for x, y, and z. All right. Last example in symmetric matrices, um, example 4.4.5. I have two symmetric matrices A and B, and I'm given that extra piece of information that they commute. I want to show that AB is also symmetric. All right, so here's what we're given. We're given asymmetric, so that means A transpose is A. We're given B symmetric. So B transpose is B. And we're given that the matrices commute. If you remember, that means that whether I take AB or BA, I get the same answer. So we're given all three of these conditions, and we want to show that AB is symmetric. So our goal is to apply this definition in red here to AB. And so we want AB transpose to be AB.
B. All right, so let's see. If I take A, B transpose, um, properties of the transpose tell me that when I bring when I bring the transpose into a product, I should flip the order. All right, and then we're going to use these fact. B transpose is B, A transpose is A because they're symmetric. So I get B, A. And I want it to be equal to A, B. We got it to B, A. That's close. In general, you'd be stuck here, but now we're not because we're given that the matrices commute. So this is the same as A, B. And so we've used, let's put where we've used each of them. So we've used 1 plus 2 here, and we've used property 3 here. All right, so we did prove that the transpose of AB is AB. And so yes, AB is symmetric.